All right, guys and gals, here we are, Bob's Barn Workshop. What are we doing today? Well, my son-in-law loaned me his gas MIG welder. It uses uh, argon gas. And so I want to experiment with welding with gas before I actually use it. What the real project for today is, is I bought this muffler for the, you know, first I bought the header. And the header's really loud for that 18 horsepower Duramax. So I found a very large, very free flowing muffler that'll take some of the edge off. The problem is, the good news is, inch and a quarter pipe threads fit the muffler, and that fits in there with just a hair around it. So. Just a hair of space, I mean. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna cut this threaded part off so it's got about an extra quarter inch of no threads showing. Put it even in the pipe, like this. I'll tack it a little bit here, and then I'll, uh, where I cut it off, I'll, I'll tack weld it all the way around. I'll stitch it until it's done. And then I can take the muffler on and off. If I want to go straight pipe, I just unscrew the muffler. Hopefully I won't lose the muffler in the woods somewhere. But I'm going to play with the weld. So let's see what we got here. There we go. Difference. What a difference with gas. I think I gotta speed my I'm gonna put it on high the next level, speed my wire up a little bit. Wow, I look like I know how to weld, huh? Look at that. It looks like a friggin' slug. All right, well, it sure looks a lot better than those crappy welds I'm getting from my little uh, DC welder. I'm gonna practice a little more, or my little AC welder that I got for 79 bucks. I'm gonna practice with this a little more and uh, then we'll go to fixing that exhaust. Alright, let's see if we can destroy this. I want to make sure I don't blow through. See, I'm using the, the ground clamp to help locate it. Put a little bead inside the. There we go. There we go. Just add a little strength there, so I'm just going to roll this around and put a bead about every quarter of the way around. Gotta be careful, I don't wanna. I'm just gonna put one more. Huh, I'm blowing them inside the mask. I don't wanna destroy my threads, which I may have already. I think it's alright. Yeah. 
All right, so now it's all about this. So, will that hold up if I stand her up like that? Yes, it will. All right, can we see what I'm doing still? I'll try not to get right in your way. like a welder, huh? Wait a minute, let me move this to the bottom. So it acts like a stand, there we go. I could just about do a continuous bead around this. Holy cow, it makes me look like a welder. Good enough for a muffler, ain't it? Oh, this isn't... Wow. One more spot and it's welded completely around. Bingo. I'm kind of proud of that weld. <laughs> what a difference, huh, guys? All right. Sorry, I missed a little bit. I moved around a little bit on you. I'm bad. I'm zoomed in. But once I wear brush that weld, that's all I'm going to do to it. I have been welding a while. I've just never had a good welder. So there you go. See? You get the right tool and you look even better. I'm going to go over and wire brush this and I'll come back and show you the finished product. Yeah, see I just I just put these around the lip here to help stabilize that so the vibration won't flex it off. So anyway, now we can go open header or, or when I'm riding it around my yard and I don't want the neighbors to be uh, too mad at me. I gotta figure out some way to lock this on. And I've got an idea. How about if I weld a tab right here? I got a piece of quarter inch bar sticking out, and I drill a hole through sort of for sort of like maybe a quarter inch bolt. You back the bolt out of the hole in the muffler, because this muffler is hollow. And you back the bolt out and you can unscrew it. And then you screw it all the way in again and screw the muffler, uh, the bolt in until it goes into the hole. That'll at least keep this from vibrating loose. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of flex core and AC welding and they are so ugly compared to that. That's such a beautiful weld. I wish I'd used it before. But it is what it is. I don't think my welds on this thing are gonna fall apart. They just are ugly. They're not smooth and nice. There's no spatter. I mean, I just can't believe that. I can't believe how smooth these are. They look just like, you know, half of a rod cut in half and bolted down like that. Holy cow. Well, my son-in-law was right. He said, you'll never go back if you use this welder with gas. And that's just a little farmhand 115. I don't even know where he got it from. Central tractor, maybe? Uh, I don't know. 
boy, is that nice. All right, the next part of this project is something I'm trying to make a plate for the top of where the recoil starter is on the motor where I can mount or make my own kind of a bell crank I'll probably hinge it back here I've already cut and painted these things by the way I'm gonna put a little washer and stuff in between there from here to the carburetor the linkage will be and I'll put several different holes in here so I can adjust the throw well to attach the throttle cable and make it adjustable I decided to reuse this little duflase off from the original throttle linkage that was up here. So I just need to find a drill bit. Now this is going to be in millimeters. Make sure this is zeroed. Yeah, it's zeroed. So that is 270. 270. I'm lazy, so I'm obviously not going to do it. I got my fence tightened down so this thing won't start whipping around if it gets loose. Twisty. All right. All right. I'm back again. And my clip. There's my clip. Don't lose the clip. There you go. There we go. It's tight, but it's not too tight to turn when the cable pushes and pulls on it. So now the cable will stay straight as it comes in and out of that lever. And I need to drill a hole over here. My clamp for the cable is going to be back here. And the cable is going to pull like this. And then I'm going to have several holes. Several holes along here for the size of my... Uh, bell crank wire, my uh, throttle wire, Let's see if I can get him out. So I gotta mic this guy, because see that's got the Z-bend on the end, and I'm gonna drill several holes out through here so we can adjust how much this actually moves in relationship to the foot pedal because I want the foot pedal to move quite a bit versus this not moving as much so by using different holes on that lever at different distances from the rotation point you can get different uh, amounts of throw to your system and that's my story and I'm sticking to it so And I wanted to bring it back this way far enough because what I'm going to have to do is somewhere out here I'm going to mount that return spring which was used on the original go-kart throttle and it might still be on the table. This is a pretty stout little spring so I want to put a hole here somewhere and some sort of little tab that when I pull this, it pulls this return spring and sucks it back to the uh, idle position. I'm going to have to put several other stops on here so I don't tear the throttle out of the carburetor with foot pedal strength because that's a lot of strength. And uh, this little anti rattle guy, I can reuse him. I could actually use him as a throttle return. Too. I could hook it into the 
engine somewhere. Let me go look. Okay. All right, we'll be back when I uh, figure out up from down around here. All right. All right. I got those hill holes drilled. And yeah, they're not the straightest, but I just put five across here at different lengths so that we can have a little adjustment there. I'm refreshing my Lactite here a little bit. I just I didn't I didn't want much sticking down on the bottom of this either because it has to go over the engine pull start cover. So that nut has to fit just right tight like that. Now put the cable on here. A throttle linkage goes in here. Oops, there we go. Bing bada bing bada boom, eh? Alright. I'm going to tighten this nut up. Get my screw and drive in. All right. It's snug, but it's not. All right. I'm going to put a drop off. No, I'm not going to put the oil in it yet. I'll put the oil in it later. Okay, so now we have our bell crank. Now I've got to figure out an attachment for the end of the new cable. And I'm going to just use the old one if I can find it. If not, I'll just bend a washer. And we'll use a washer to hold it down. And I'm not in a bolt. Actually, I could tap that and that would really make it come in tight. There it is right there. Okay, here's your cable hold down. I want that to be back here. I want to be able to put a bolt through that and a nut like so. But I'm going to tap this. So I have to just have my tap sets here. And these are 1024. So 1024 needs another number 25 drill. That's a number 25 drill right there. Number drills are very important. And I hopefully have my tap in here. 1024. All right, so. Then I'll put the nut on the bottom. Oh, maybe I won't though, because I need to tighten that down, don't I? Okay, this is what I was saying. The clamp is all drilled and tapped and ready to tighten on the cable. The bell crank arm moves. All the holes are drilled. Stick the throttle in here, boom, boom, boom. I need something to pull it back. So this is the original spring that was on the engine when I got it. So I'm thinking I need to install it. I'm going to have to straighten that out a little bit. Install it in here. Like so, there we go. And then I'll have to weld something out here to hold it. So let me take you over and show you on the engine.
what I'm talking about here. I'm going to jump you around for a little bit. All right, I got two bolts right here. This will bolt just like that through these two bolt holes. Now I've got my throttle. I'm going to have to bend my blinkage bar to a different length. Excuse me. Okay. I'm guessing about there is what I want. And uh, that's going to be the extent of my throttle throw, so it doesn't really doesn't need much on this thing. I mean, we're talking half an inch. I'm going to go down one more hole. I'm just going to have to call that quits, I think. But once I get that bolted in place, I can measure what is, is off, because th this has to pull to turn the throttle on. And it's not going to have to bend too much. But it's going to be sitting up here, so it'll be plenty of clearance. I'll be able to reuse my little tension spring there. And... Be all nice, won't it? I'll re-bend it and stick it into another one of these holes. Um, and as I said, somehow I'll figure out where to anchor this spring. As I said, I think I'll just grind off some pain and just weld a nut on its side and, and hook that right into it. I guess it probably doesn't need too much force to return it. I guess I could put it out here. As I said, that's something we'll have to work with. All right, let's see if we can get this into the start unit. I got to be able to see where my torque converter assembly is going to end up. Maybe just use this piece of particle board. See, that's the problem. Um, how far it's going to stick down? torque converter is going to stick down in the way and hit this part of the frame. I got to figure out where I can put the motor so that when the suspension moves it doesn't bang but my torque converter still fits. And it's a heavy sucker. You've seen me muscle it in here before. I got myself an old chair here. Getting lazy in my old age. I really only need two of these bolts. Let's position this. And I believe it goes through that hole right there. up any higher because because of this part of the structure will be right against the engine those look like go power sports uh, brake brackets don't they see I could bring the engine down that low It's going to sit right here. See what I mean? Let me see something here. All right. 
right, here's the plate. I already have this warmed up. I'm trying to keep the center of gravity down too, you know. This has got to line up. Oh, there's plenty of room. I want to put, I want to drop this down in between so this drops the width of the motor mount down. So it's going to drop down to about there. Still be a little higher. It'll give me enough room to shuck this back. And okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut this off and then going to re-weld it in between there. So it's going to be a lot of grinding and cutting. You probably don't want to see, watch me do it, but... down I gotta do the other. Alright so I got both of those wall welds ground off which they were great welds by the way even with my crappy little welder. So now I'm gonna take the flat wheel and I've got to burn this all off. I've got a much better welder now. Alright face shield. I probably should have earring protection. See what I'm doing? Gotta do this to both sides. I gotta do it to both rails. The rails aren't bad because I kind of cut in on them. All right. We'll okay. So I've got it all cleaned up. It's brown. Down to bare metal, both edges. I've got my new wire feed welder over here. That my son in law along me, which is has gas. So I've got to clamp down here in the bed flat. So I'm going to do each corner so it doesn't warp. Another one on this corner and probably another two on the top. Sure, 
So I'm just going to go, I'm going to lengthen these a little bit, and I'll put like this. And I hope I don't run out of. Now see what we're trying to do is we're trying to locate where we want to weld this onto the frame. Well I got her set in there where she's going to go approximately. I still have to put the engine on it. I hit it with some paint and I wait for that to dry uh, just so it doesn't rust out underneath of it and protect it as long as I can. I got the engine set up over here ready to go. I hit the uh, throttle bell crank assembly. Uh, with some of the silver paint. Uh, it's still a little rough, but at least it won't rust. <laughs> right? At least it won't rust. But I got the spring on it, so I got the spring return. And uh, the clamp for the cable, of course. So, really, I mount this on the engine. I can do that before I even get it in there. Mount this on the engine and uh, test how far it throws, and then I'll just have to adjust the throttle pedal. I'm thinking about the second hole up. And about the third hole up, I've got another return spring. It's laying right in here somewhere. I threw it in here. It's long. It'll stretch a long ways, but it's got a lot of good power to it. It should suck that right back into position as soon as you take the foot off. Well, anyway, it don't matter. It's here somewhere, of course. I can't find it now, but I want to show you. I moved a lot of stuff around when I was doing other stuff, but it's here. And I've got to put a little stud here for the cable to mount to. All right, next time.